Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. I've recently done a little bit of cast iron trading, and I've received a box in the mail, and I thought, hey, we'll do an unboxing, and I'm going to do that coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. The purchase of this product helps keep this channel going, and I just want to say thank you so very much. So let's get on into our video. There's one question that I get all the time, and that is, where do you find all of your cast iron? I find pieces at yard sales, flea markets, antique stores, just people that call me and say, hey, I got some old cast iron. Do you want it? And I also have friends online, and this is where I find the best pieces. Networking. And when I say networking, I mean having friends and connections. Not just friends in your neighborhood, but friends across the country or even across the world. Now, the Shipping International might get a little, little on the expensive side, but I have done a little bit of trading across the Canadian line and had a really good time at it, made some good friends and connections in the process. Also in Facebook groups, there's quite a few Facebook groups out there. The one that we started was Cast Iron Cookware. We also have a sister group called Cast Iron Cookware Trader. But in this particular case, I've got a friend on Facebook and uh, he's a collector and he sent me a picture of a piece and he said, what do you think this is? Is this a Lady Bess? And I go, yeah, that's Lady Bess, and that's what I need. And uh, he said, I'm not really interested in getting rid of it right now, but I'll think about it. So he, I asked him what are the pieces he's looking for, and we just done some chatting back and forth, and he mentioned a couple of pieces that he was looking for. And I thought, I've got one of those pieces. Now, I want to say this, and this is key when it comes to trading and collecting cast iron. Don't be a hoarder. Now, I know it looks like I'm a hoarder because I have all this behind me, but it is part of a particular collection. Now, when I say don't be a hoarder, it doesn't mean you can't collect a lot of pieces. I had two particular pieces of the Pity Pat's Porch. Now, they were a little different. Now, if you're going to collect the Pity Pat's Porch, you can collect three or four different kind of variations, and I wouldn't consider that hoarding. So basically what I'm saying, if you have multiple duplicates, go ahead and trade them off to people who are looking for them, and you will get rewarded in the same manner for pieces you're looking for. So this particular friend of mine said, I, I'm looking for a Pity Pat's porch. And I go, I got two of them. They're a little different but I think I can get rid of one of them and be okay. And I mentioned, oh, I got a Lady Bess number six skillet. I've got two of those. So I'd be willing to get rid of one of those too. And then I had another little piece that I had a duplicate of, and it was a little, probably a Volrath unmarked. And I thought, I've got two of these. You're collecting number threes. Let me throw that in there too. Now, I didn't add up how much they were worth. You may look at the pictures and say, you got a great deal, or you may look at the pictures and say, he got a great deal. But to me, I think we both turned out great. We got something we were looking for, and we were also able to help a friend in collecting. So I'll show you a picture in just a few minutes of what I traded to him and what he also traded back to me. Now, let's get to the unboxing. I've had this thing sitting in my studio for three days now, and I have been itching to open it, but I wanted to share it with you guys as I did. So let me pull the camera down and we'll get started. Okay, I am gonna mention that when you box a piece up, you really need to box it well. You can check out my video on boxing videos. Now, there's no movement at all. You want to make sure that cast iron does not move because if it gets to moving, you'll wind up with a handle sticking out one of these corners if you have a piece with a handle. So here, let's get with it. Okay. Looks like we have something a little extra right here. Hmm. 
Now this is cool. Pennsylvania Dutch oven cookbook. Now this is going to be awesome. 1936. This is an awesome little extra thrown in. Good packing. Nice. There's no movement. This is this is completely immobilized. All around the edges. And when you're doing a lot of cast iron to save all these little pieces in a big box, you'll be surprised how handy they come in. Now you can reuse these boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack this stuff back up in here for the next round trip. Our first piece. Now also you want to be careful using a knife. You notice I'm not going to use my knife on some of this unless I just absolutely have to. Got it wrapped in paper nicely. Now that's not an 83 size, that's a number three. And the eight, I believe, is a mold mark. And check this out. We have hammering around the edges. Not on the bottom, just around the edges. I'm really having trouble following the camera here. This is more like it. So here we go. There we go. Now this wasn't hammered in. This was actually in the mold. It was transferred to the iron when they poured it. And this is a Chicago hardware foundry. I don't have one of these or didn't have one of these. And I'm collecting threes. A nice little one right here. The surface is really nice and clean. And I'm going to add that to my number three collection. But okay, let's get on to our second reveal here. Well, this one is the one I was interested in the most. Packed with bubble wrap and wrapped with paper. And here we go. A nice little casserole pan. And it is a Birmingham Stove and Range from the Lady Bess series. And it is a number eight. Now it's really small for what you would normally think a number eight. Here is a comparison. Here is a number eight Birmingham Stove and Range skillet. And this right here. And you can see it's nowhere near a number eight. It's closer to a number five size. So let's get a little bit of closer look at the markings. Now here is my other casserole pan that I did have. This is one inside the other. This one is a little harder to find and I'm really excited about this piece right here. Now the Lady Best series started in 1976 as a celebration of the Bicentennial. And I believe it ran all the way up until Birmingham Stove and Range went out of business. Check out my Lady Best series video. It will have some of the other pieces in it, except for this one. Okay, I'm still looking for about five pieces in the Lady Best series. And I'm just going to throw them out there just in case someone out there has a duplicate that they are willing to trade off. So here's the list. The 8 inch or number 8 saucepan. Number 10 or 10 inch round griddle. Number 10 or 10 inch square skillet. Number 10 or 10 inch square griddle. I also have the potpourri lid right here that I'm looking for the little potpourri base for. So in total, I'm still looking for five pieces to finish off my Lady Best collection. And just throwing that out there, 
I'm always glad to do some trading. So I'm really excited about the trade and I just always enjoy uh, trading cast iron cookware. Not just for the cast iron, but the friendships and connections that I make along the way. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please don't forget to subscribe. So I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I would like to share something with you really quickly. In Psalms chapter 128 verse 1 and 2 it says, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. I just want to say share the word and be a blessing. Mm -hmm.